And we're live on episode five of the Vegan Hour on Tuesday, March the 6th. And I'm your host, Harry Bowman. That sounds like an announcer's voice. My guest tonight is just finishing up with a patient here in the building who was, <laughs> and we are gonna bring her on very, very shortly. But let's just get a couple of the announcements out of the road because Dr. Amy is just finishing stitching up this guest, uh, this, this patient. <laughs> and let me quickly say before Dr. Amy comes on that the Vegan Hour is sponsored by Vegan Frothers and Burley Town Storage. So Vegan Frothers are where you get your cruelty-free clothing from. And let's just read out a couple of events coming up and then I'm going to bring Dr. Amy on if I can find her. If there's some sort of emergency, perhaps maybe she'll come and attend. We'll see what happens. So uh, this Saturday, March the 10th, Women Against Dairy March in March. Wow. Women Against Dairy March, 11 a.m. Roma Street, Brisbane. And this Sunday, March the 11th, is a plant-based nutrition seminar at 10 a.m. in Brisbane as well. And look, we're getting um, well, we're getting comments, we're getting lots of people joining in already. That is inter that is excellent. So I'm starting to feel like I'm starting to feel a little bit lightheaded, like maybe I need medical attention. So let's see. Calling Dr. Amy, calling Dr. Amy to the vegan hour. Dr. Amy. <laughs> I don't think I'm alive yet. Can you? How are you doing, Harry? I'm in shock. <laughs> oh, welcome along. Welcome along, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> just for fun. Just for fun. We thought we'd do something different for fun, folks. So <laughs> Amy's actually really serious, but we thought we'd do something for fun. Actually, she's full of fun too. She's full of knowledge. She's full of fun. So tonight, it's going to be both knowledge and fun, Ooh, isn't it? Yay. Yes. You've, and you've even got your stethoscope if I start having medical problems again. Sure. So, no yes. worries. Okay. So. As I mentioned earlier, Dr. Amy is, you are a vegan doctor. Actually, I didn't say that earlier, but you're a vegan doctor. Yes. This is the first time in three years on the Vegan Hour that we've ever had a vegan doctor. Is it? We've had vegan oh, nutritionists, we've had vegan either. naturopaths, we've had vegan vets. Wow. We've never had a vegan doctor, so this is a first. So, and so, everyone watching tonight, um, I want you to ask Amy your health related questions and she'll do her best to ignore that to answer them. I'm feeling under the pressure now. <laughs> Three years well, so you've had no vegan doctors. That's right. Where the are good, they all? The good thing is you do lots of live streams. So you're yeah, used, true. You're used yeah. to the format. You're used to this sort of thing. So yeah. um, Luba says, hi, two funny guys. <laughs> Glad to see a vegan doctor. <laughs> and uh, Amanda says, hey guys. And so yeah, thank you everyone for joining. So <clears throat> what we're going to do tonight is we're going to find out a little bit about what makes you a vegan doctor. Mm, We're going okay. to find a little bit about, I want to start off with your credentials, yep. um, why you became a, a doctor and also why you became vegan. Yes. And then the two collided. Yes. And then Harry had an emergency and then, and then Harry, and then met, Harry met, met, met Amy. <laughs> yes, Harry met sorry. Amy. Yes, Harry met Amy, which was a very popular promo, one of our most popular promos. Okay. We're so, a bit out of the box really, aren't we? <laughs> together we tend to, to, to... Together we tend to be very out of the box. The box got <laughs> torn up and thrown away. It was just okay. So we'll try and be semi-serious. And I see a lot of people coming on there, which is really good. So um, you're a doctor, I believe. Yeah, it's actually funny you just said that because <laughs> yeah. that's most people don't think I'm a doctor, by the way. And I, I what, what, why? Because they just don't believe I'm a doctor. What? Because you know? you're too young. You're too. Yeah, they think I'm young. I'm actually you're not too young. Vibrant. Like yeah, doctors maybe. are meant to be old and stodgy or something. Yeah, is that maybe. It? I'm quite, um, yeah, I mean, I suppose I, I don't think I look that young anymore. I mean, I'm 34. You oh, you're so over the hill. I know. Oh, it's all downhill God. from it's now just, on. <laughs> you'll be lucky if you make it to the end of the week. I know, I mean, exactly. I'll be like, <laughs> I'll need that again. <laughs> Seriously, 34, what are you worried about? No, okay. but seriously, so, yeah. people people often, um, they, yeah, I suppose because I'm quite like happy and um, yeah. I do a lot of, I truly believe that health is a, not just our physical body, it's the way that we think, it's the way that we yep. conduct ourselves <laughs> and, you know, the lifestyle that really we have and the way that we work. Sorry, John said, I think the stethoscope gave it away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did. <laughs> Maybe I should put 
put it back on there. Um, and I like somebody, somebody's happy in your account and, uh, and is watching. I don't know how the hell they did that, but there's, there's, a, there's some strange things going on here. But yeah, so a lot of people don't necessarily, um, they always they always see my post and then they're like, are you actually a doctor? Because sometimes I don't yeah. necessarily talk like a doctor because I'm quite, yes. um, I suppose I'm quite familiar, I'm quite approachable. Yes. And so yes. maybe that the old ways of doctors is hopefully coming. What? What is, it with, what is it with uh, traditional doctors, if I can use that term, yeah. where you go to them and they are very, <laughs> what's an Stand adjective? Standoffish? Standoffish, yeah. maybe. I mean, not always. I mean, no, no, I mean no. certainly there are very approach, uh, approachable Amazing. doctors, you know, yeah. but, but, you know, there is a stereotype, isn't there? Yeah, you know, I think Not a stereoscope. No. <laughs> I think oh no, the jokes have started. Oh no. No, we haven't even got into content you have, yet. You should, have, you should have heard it before we went live. Oh my God. I do think <laughs> that things are changing. Um, I yeah. think that before, years ago, the patient doctor relationship was very much that the doctor directed a patient and, yeah. you know, told them essentially what to do. And, you know, I suppose the patient took a bit of a back seat and probably wasn't at that point in a place where they were quite empowered or didn't have the education they do now. Whereas, you know, internet and YouTube and blogs like this, you know, every person knows about health now. So I feel that the relationship specifically for me, like the way I take health is very holistic. So I don't feel like I'm telling you what to do. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm yeah. really just kind of like an accountability partner and helping people walk through their choices and I'm like kind of guiding you and if you pick a different choice then there's no judgment there it's just okay. I, work with, I work with people dependent on their choices it doesn't I think it'd be I, fair to say that you're um, their friend in medicine yes exactly <laughs> what a great he came up with this one I by the way. I, came up with it. I was like, I'm going to steal this. <laughs> yeah, I didn't charge you for it either. No, you didn't. <laughs> but actually, that, that just just uh, briefly on that, uh, you know, sort of doctors uh, being held in a, a supposed high esteem in the past. Yeah. I have read that historically that goes back a long way. Yeah. And it yeah. goes back like a hundred years or something. And there was uh, doctors and lawyers were sort of in this group of people that were sort of above everyone else. Yeah. It's, but it's, but it's, now it's coming down to well, I actually you know, more think my, my granddad was a um, very well-known doctor in my, my hometown and where yeah. I was born in yeah. a small village. And yeah. actually it was very, he was highly regarded, but it was such a different way that medicine was then. So actually the house that my mum and dad still live in yeah. is my granddad's house. And in the front of the house was his consultation room. Oh, so wow. doc, people would knock on the door when they had issues with relationships or, you okay. know, and he was so their friend in medicine. He did, li yeah. they literally came that, that's as a, you that, know. That's very personal. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. 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 That's great. So he wasn't just a doctor. He was like a counselor. Yeah, and that's um, what the GPs... And a friend, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. and ultimately that's what yeah. we want GPs to be. It's just, yeah. sadly, the system is really, con you know, restricted. And so often people don't feel that they get their um, agendas addressed in such a short time. And some GPs definitely can do it, um, yeah. but it is a very difficult thing because it's time limited. I was going to say, when you say restricted, they have a time limit. They have a time limit, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. you can obviously book longer slots, but right. but ultimately they still have a waiting list. So mm. it's a different, mm. it's a really difficult place to be in a, in mm. a GP, and I think mm. they do really, really well. But it's still hard. Mm. So okay, you don't work in that traditional field of a GP. No, you know? no. I work as a functional as a functional doctor. Business. So let's let's go back to um, you studied medicine in the UK. In Wales. In Wales. Yes. Yes, that's near the UK. Yes. <laughs> A lot of people don't know where it is, yes. <laughs> There's not a lot of whales in And they're like, oh, lovely, how you doing? <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your, your background and your history there. So. Um, yeah, so my granddad was a doctor. My dad tried to do medicine mm. and um, failed. And um, my brother also was really keen on doing it and didn't achieve it either. And so it was really kind of mm. like left to me. And, yes. and I loved No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. And uh, yeah, I, I fell into it naturally. And I love medicine. Um, I'm very um, fascinated by the body. I find yeah. it. I find it extremely By the amazing. Way it works and, well, just yeah. like look at how yeah. different our eyes are, our fingerprints. We're just so unique. Yes. We're so different, yeah. and yeah. I just think it's such a beautiful thing to be grateful for. Mm. To have this yes. vessel that we're given. And 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 
that um, gratitude is also should be reflected in looking after it the best way, shouldn't it? Yes, yes, definitely. Which is where you come in to help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean, I did. Um, my background was a lot of acute, acute medicine. So mm -hmm. I what, pretty what, much. What is acute medicine? What's so you know, if you get rushed into hospital and you have chest pain or shortness of breath, ah, um, yes. yeah. You know, any of these and you, and, and you need to be, and you need to. Yeah, you need a defib. <laughs> defib. Yeah, I mean, and. You know, in all honesty, that is what I pretty much did for almost 10 years. Um, wow. And I was, you know, running busy acute medical units. So you're talking like 40 acute patients like in a day where you're evaluating and investigating yeah. and then diagnosing and then giving treatment plans. High, a high pressure environment. Very high pressure, very yeah. quick turnaround. Yeah. Um, really, really trying to sift what's the highest priority. And right. I suppose that really led me to realize that... I, w I personally felt like I was really only t um, looking after the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. And so, you know, the people yeah. that were truly, really, really sick, then yeah. we would defib them. And we yeah. would, you know, I've yeah. given many adrenalines and things to people. But, you know, it, what really stirred for me or what really made a difference was seeing people that still had symptoms and still had bloating yeah. and, you yeah. know, still had issues with their weight or their mental health. And yet all the tests were normal and uh, you know and and yeah. that's a really difficult situation and, and what they call normal yeah would probably be really outside the parameters of what is healthy yes definitely yeah. and then that yeah, really so. put me onto a spiral of really realizing that myself it mm -hmm. really took my own health to basically burn be burnt out and Right. So yeah. from that environment, you became burnt out. Oh, completely. Yeah. Like yeah. if you yeah. speak to any doctors, you'll yeah. know that they generally work 12 hours a day and they have yeah. four weeks off a year, which includes your Christmas and your back, you know, nothing right. is given to you. It's so yeah. many, many yeah. Christmases and New Year's and spent yeah. in the hospital and night shifts and being woken up with the uh, bleeps like you just did, <laughs> you know, oh, so we didn't it's get bleeps. We should have bleeps when we get it. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it, it led to burnout, it led to very poor skin, yeah, um, really yeah. bad gut, um, yeah. you know, constantly feeling bloated, tired would all the time. Th would this also be a possible reason why um, you end up with doctors that are smoking, drinking and just got really bad habits? Oh, because I've often definitely. wondered, um, uh, years ago I was walking past the back of uh, Tweed Hospital, 6 o'clock in the morning when they were about to start a shift, they are all out there smoking. Really? Doctors and nurses yeah. all out there smoking, I'm just like... You well, guys are the health professionals? Yeah. It's wow. A, it's a difficult one yeah. because because of high and pressure And hello, jobs, Paige. Thank you for... <laughs> hello, Paige. Sorry, I, I saw you coming there. Sorry. Um, um, because of high pressure jobs, not just medicine, you oh, know, a lot oh. of high pressure jobs, they actually do attract that um, higher suicidal rate. And what we... Oh, have we disconnected? No, it's all right. It's all right. But they do attract that higher suicidal rate. So people um, do look to forms of escapism. So they use food. They use. Oh, oh, we're, and we're back. Oh, we're back. <laughs> you nutter. We're back. Oh, God. We were just now talking we just need, and we weren't even we just, live. We just need. We just need. Yeah. Well, we were live here. Yeah, we, we just were live. need. Um, we just need people to um, to come on on the part two now. So. To realise we're actually still mm. here. Mm. <laughs> Mitchell's joined. John's, uh, Denny's, Paige rejoined. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Internet decided to do funny things. I can't even blame the mobile phone this time. Just couldn't get any of anyway. Amy's happy. That's all that matters. And <laughs> we'll just wait for a few more of you people to come back online. Hi again, Paige. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> After sorting out all the technology. I resuscitated him. Uh, yeah. You, if you saw the very beginning of this, you would have seen that. I should have stayed dead longer. I should have just... Uh, I know. Longer. You guys didn't get to see the magic um, that I worked on it. Now, uh, Paige says, Amy, uh, I would like to connect with you. Now, that's actually yeah, good. Sure. Let me put a link up there to your web page, to Amy's web page for you, Paige. Um... Let me just put that. Here. Hi, John. We um, see you. And uh, Dana says, "What happened? I don't know what happened." <laughs> Harry died. I died. <laughs> I died. Amy had to resuscitate well, him. Amy had to resuscitate me. I'll, I'll use any excuse. But <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I'll put a link there to Amy's web page. And uh, great, excellent. And Danny says hello, and Paige says 
Thanks, Harry. Good. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep a close eye on this now, make sure it keeps going, otherwise I'm going to be annoyed. Um, right. So, we were talking about how um, being in, in uh, working as a GP mm. can really badly affect your health. Any, med any medicine. A any medicine. Yeah. Very intense, yeah. long hours, yeah. and then, uh, you know, the person that's meant to be keeping others healthy. Yes is not healthy themselves. Completely. And as I was saying, I think when it just broke up was that, you know, in high stressful jobs, there's a big correlation with a higher suicide risk. And ah, often, often yeah. doctors and, you know, lawyers, lots of people in high yeah. risk, um, um, professions. high professions, yeah, high risk they, professions, they yeah. usually are um, more susceptible to using drugs, alcohol, oh, and yeah. um, Drugs, alcohol. Oh, yeah. And Why am I losing my thought up train? Oh, because I have that effect on people. <laughs> but, um, but actually, but basically, they try yeah. escape it, try escape to escape it, yeah. from yeah. that reality. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah. So I heard years ago that um, dentists supposedly at that time had the highest suicide rate. Mm, I wouldn't be so, surprised. Yeah, I always thought dentists seemed pretty chill, but maybe there's something pretty bad about looking at people's mouths all day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, okay, so so you found yourself personally in a spot where you, you were burnt out. Completely. So what did you do then? Um... Oh, well, actually, because like most of us, I'm human, um, I did what most people I've do and, 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 and we move on, right? So we yeah. have a little crisis and yeah. we get over it yeah. and then we play happy families again as if everything's okay. Right. And then the universe stopped me and I broke my leg twice. In, in what period of time? Uh, twice within a year. Yeah, yeah and, and not it. just like you funny. broke it and recovered, and then broke it again. Yeah, and the same leg, and in a really kind of freaky accident. So if anyone's a little bit spiritual out there, yeah. it was really, really weird circumstances. And yeah, so mm, um, interesting. That told me to slow down, and that told me to really oh. start looking after myself. So, so actually, that's I just want to focus on that for a moment because when I broke my leg and my wrist, yeah. I also wondered what I was being told. Mm. So your message you got was to slow down? Completely. Right, okay. And I still, to this day, and being completely authentic and honest, because that's mm. that's my core values, is I still find that really difficult. You know, mm. I still want to, to... slow down. I still need to you were, push in. You were such a go-getter. You were going, going here, there, and everywhere. I know, and I know. Incredible. I need to be careful. I, I mean, don't break I, another leg. I wanted to start the live stream, and you were resuscitating some <laughs> other people. You know. No, I'm a busy <laughs> bee. You're a busy bee. You are indeed. But you've got a lot that you want to achieve, and you, mm. and and also you your passion is to help others, isn't it? Obviously, definitely, definitely. So that's why you're so busy. You want to achieve. You want to help others, which is fantastic. Yeah, I'm on a so mission. You you are. I'm yeah. on a mission from God. <laughs> you're on Literally. a mission. You're on a mission from medicine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, let's. So so you you took a break and and um, you regrouped. Yes, yeah. I um, found my way learning about. Um, I suppose lifestyle behaviors. Right. So I started yeah. learning about kind of meditation and the oh, benefits yeah. of yoga mm -hmm. and the benefits of eating healthy and simple things I changed. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't really until I really delved into nutritional medicine and started doing it as a specialty and learning about it that I actually was faced with a lot of patients who came to me um, with cancer. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it wasn't really until I suppose even for me in that in medical career, really seeing people of ages younger than me with terminal conditions, and wow. then what they were doing yeah. with their diet and how right. they were changing it, and then I was yeah. like, hold on, mm -hmm. I can't, I need to listen because you yes. know for me it's all yeah. about that the patient teaches me too, okay. and so yeah. I was often realizing that all these patients that were coming in, it was like okay, why are you going vegan? You know, mm. why are they doing detoxes? Mm. You know, mm. and all of these things. And, you know, and they taught me a lot of stuff. And then mm. I started saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to basically start eating very high, high vibrational foods. And, Excellent. Excellent. And that's how it happened. And, and what sort of changes did you notice in yourself when you did that? Oh, huge. Yeah. Um, amazing. My skin has improved yeah. dramatically. I used yeah. to have acne. Yeah. Um, I used to have what they call IBS. So really it was just fluctuations in bloating and constipation versus diarrhea. Wow. That's yeah. completely gone. Um, I had struggled a lot with my weight, would put weight yeah. on quicker. I'm much yeah. more stable in my weight. And my mood is... Ten times better. Apart from being totally insane, your mood is Yeah, fine. apart from being like 
constantly, yeah. constantly on and doing too Have you got, too, too, have you got too much energy now? Oh, you? I know. I have did it, got it right did it, so it did make a difference to your energy levels? Yeah, my, on, in all honesty, my yeah. energy levels were always good and that's why I think okay. I coped so long right. in such a high-pressured job yep. and the jobs that I was doing. But it was more that I would crash and burn yeah. when, let's say, you have a day off. And I'm sure yeah. people can relate to this. When you, you work, 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 and then there's one day off, and then it's like suddenly that one day off you're sick, and yeah. you're like, why is it the one day yeah. that I'm off? That was me. It was yeah. like I was run down, tired, yeah. and really it was because I wasn't taking consistently regular yeah. like self-care. Yeah, and it's funny actually, so that what you said there, just talking about that situation where you might have a day off and you get sick on that day, is that almost like a psychological thing where you're pushing yourself to keep going? Yes. And seriously, <laughs> well, why? It's doing it again. Oh, I know, we're that, back. That back we're just, <laughs> like, ah, might move He's like might, really might nervous. Move, yeah, I might have to like calm him down. I might need another electric shock or something. But, but, you know, that situation where you get sick on your day off, is that like you, you pushed yourself psychologically to you keep going oh. through all the work days and then you, and then you just had to let go of that on the day off and that's where it all came crashing in the air? In all honesty, the, my, for me, my, the biggest observation that I've noticed now working 12 years in medicine mm. is that we're all burnt out. Mm, and then we're okay. all yeah. so stressed yeah. by the responsibilities of our job and our work life mm. and our families and the, how we overcome it. Yeah. That's actually the largest issue that I see with patients. So, you know, I get a lot of patients that are um, high end business professionals and running your own business. I mean, mm. it's probably oh. one of the most stressful things ever. Yes. So, yeah, I think, yeah. I think. My mission, or what I would love, is going a little bit off topic, but I would love that everyone had a set wage throughout the world. Yeah. yeah. And that, you know, essentially you just do the things that you're passionate about and then you barter. Uh, so maybe yes. I'm maybe I am passionate about health, right? Yeah. And you're yeah. passionate about speaking yeah. and you barter yeah. and help each yeah. other out. Or if you're a farmer and then you've got an architect, um, you know, an uh, architect, yeah, an architect, yeah. you just barter for the work yeah. that's done. And yeah. Honestly, I, I truly believe we're going to have big issues with our kind of government system and our money and our healthcare. We already do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> but we do. I think yeah. I think it will yeah. find some big crashes occurring. Yes. Yes. So um, yeah. so yeah, I think if okay. everyone stop, so, stops working so much ooh. and actually realizes that this life is very very short. Well, as John comments there, I don't think it's natural to work the way mm. we do in modern modernity. Tribal tribal people never work. Exactly, like yeah. and I'm 100% yeah. with you, yeah. John, completely. Yeah. yeah. It's a whole system that we're sort of born into these days. And, and high achieving and, and, and pushing yeah. forward, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's going to yeah. be, the, it's going to kill and, us and all. The, yeah, that will, that's the, to, the, to our detriment. Yes. Yes, okay. So this is where you come in. Oh, we've got a question here from Donna. Um, can you suggest anything for helping a hiatus, a hiatus hernia, is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Pronounce it? Uh, and also helping regulate hormones. Yeah, so um, that's like asking how long's a piece of string. <laughs> um, how long's a piece of string? Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> hiatus hernia is a functional problem, so it's actually the. Does, do people online know what a hiatus hernia is? Um, I can draw it for you if you want. Um, but basically, yeah. well, we're getting we're getting art. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm very good at art, by the way. Um, but, but, but that's. But basically, this is your esophagus. Bring it, bring it in. You'll have to bring it in closer. So we can. Oh, okay, this. This good. is yeah. your esophagus. Yeah. This is the stomach. Oh, here, and you go down to your intestine. And hiatus hernia is just essentially you're bringing up more of this up into the esophagus. So it gives you horrible symptoms of, you know, indigestion and acid and sometimes, you know, the pain right here in your sternum. So it's, it's, a, it's a functional problem usually. So it's actually like a structural problem um, that medications don't help a significant amount, mm. but it can be related to issues with, you know, acid or lack of acid or more acid in your stomach. So that's more to do with indigestion and gastritis, which is just inflammation of the lining of your stomach. So, and can I help with hormones? Yeah, we can help with hormones. Everyone has very different hormones, but it's difficult for me to suggest because what I do is personalized medicine. So not one size fits all. Um, and that's, the philosophy of functional medicine is that your hormones are very different to mine, um, Dana. So I couldn't, I couldn't tell you what yours are because I've not tested them. 
So, so in order to establish, um, like with something like that, yeah. you would do a, a series of tests and that to find out yeah. what's going on. Yeah, yeah, obviously. you can do yeah. your female yeah. hormone tests easily. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they did one on me once and I didn't have any female hormones. <laughs> um, don't know why that was. Um, but so with any, so for helping a, 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 a hiatus hernia, <laughs> Um, oh, I love what Paige any... just wrote. Disconnect to yeah. reconnect with self. It's so good, isn't true. it? That's, that's, so I'm, true. I'm gonna. That's that's a meme. I'm gonna write that down. Yes. That's good. Disconnect to reconnect. And with actually, self. Um, um, not that I need to like try and promote myself, but I actually run retreats, and um, that's the reason I run retreats because I find that when you immerse people in an environment that's controlled with healthy food, controlled with the you know, as much as you can with the weather and the, the time of the year and the environment. And I work a lot with nature, so I work a lot with wild dolphins. Um, I feel that people really transform themselves when they get to disconnect. And usually it's very, very difficult for people to disconnect at home. For them, for the average Joe, that is. It would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. Too many distractions. Well, most people have kids and yeah. kids never, yeah. they don't stop and even without, And even without, everyone has a TV and has the internet and has fake, fake book and you know, it's yeah. just, yeah. And, and neighbors and jobs and yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Fake book? Was that the one you're laughing at? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get, I get people with that one. Um, okay. Oh, and I see Nick has joined. Good on you, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's in the background. Yeah, he's one it. of the studio audience. Yeah, he's, he's helping us out. He's helping us out. He's ready for the next, the next, um, you know, Dr. Amy to the vegan hour. He's ready for the next one. Okay. And, can, and John says connect with nature too. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yes. Grounding, so, earthing. There's a lot of, um, again, a lot of studies about that because, my, um, if anyone looks at my website, you'll see I, I believe medicine for me rests on three pillars. Mm -hmm. It's health, happiness, and harmony. Mm -hmm. So for me, happiness is all about the way that we think, the um, behaviors that we you know, actually go out and act and do. Yeah. It's the humanitarian work, the people that we help. And harmony is about, yeah, going inward. So it's your Tai Chi, your meditation, your yoga, your mindfulness of eating, they actually all allow you to go into a parasympathetic system. So you reduce your blood pressure, you reduce your heart rate, you are stimulating your vagus nerve, and ultimately the your, more time- Your vagus nerve? Yes, so that gets you into a parasympathetic okay. nervous system. Harry's, Probably, Harry's, that's a bit too complicated. Harry's, Harry's lost because parasympathetic has about 11 syllables for yeah. starters, so I'm lost there. And the vagus nerve? Yeah, okay. the vagus nerve so, controls the parasympathetic system. And, and the parasympathetic system is... The parasympathetic system is... One when you like this. Mm, yeah. yeah, it's a different state, is it? Is it it's, an older state? So like the fight, the brain fight or flight state yeah. is yeah. your sympathetic, so you're like ah, running after yes. that, like, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. And yeah. then the Paris. parasympathetic is when you're in Zen mode. And Excellent. most okay. people nowadays, we're not in the parasympathetic for very often, apart from when we're asleep. So it's not a, not a good thing. We need to be and meditating more or, or using something whichever you know this is personalized some people yes. don't like meditation but yoga or tai chi they've yeah. also got extremely good studies on it it's and really, breath just breath work breath work it's really good to, to hear you say that because that's the, something that, I, that i've found personally to be very powerful is meditation yoga breath work yeah yeah so it's good to hear that yeah. um so folks so you you just going back a step to what you were saying earlier that um you were ha finding that people that had cancer mm. that were actually uh, going on to vegan diets? Is that what you were saying? They, yeah. These were my observations of people that I saw in my clinic. I never yeah. did a, a research study or anything. Right. I just, it just was my epiphany that, yeah. you know, one after another of cancer patients that comes yeah. to see you, yeah. you like, you can't not listen to what they, yes. they, yeah. they weren't being told to do it from anyone. That, you know, right. at the end of the day, when you have a massive crisis, like being told you have cancer, mm. you do, you, you, these are the most researched patients mm. that you ever deal with, mm. right? Because it's mm. life or death scenario mm. and they educate me. Um, so yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't miss that so, it was coming around. Yeah. So what, they were getting good results by changing their diet. That's... They, you know, yes, they, some obviously it's dependent yeah. on different cases, of but, course. but ultimately yeah. they yeah. felt better. They, they, otherwise they wouldn't have been doing Excellent. it. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. yeah, that's great. So that was a bit of an eye opener. You were learning from them, which yes. is fantastic because that means that you're 
You don't think you know at all? You're open to... <laughs> you're I don't... Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, did we have a little glitch <laughs> we again, did. did we? Yeah, no, I don't... Must be the weather or something. I uh, definitely don't know at all. Yes. And honestly, I, I truly ask anyone out there that... Um, anyone that you are seeking any professional help from that you always question why you're doing you? something because yes. you know at the end of the day this is your body your health so yeah do your own research and but then you know you work with someone that you have rapport and trust with at the end of the day yes that's right rapport and trust um john says the power of observation is often overlooked mm -hmm. exactly and um christine says i hope you're recording uh yes there's a second camera recording for YouTube so if anyone's missing bits and pieces of this it's all going to be up on YouTube so don't panic folks <laughs> okay so um, functional medicine yes. which is what you do now yes I mean it is a holistic approach is that how you describe it yeah it's yeah. lifestyle medicine lifestyle medicine so okay. it's you know it's so. coming in and, and so it's not just, just treating the symptom like you know no. a, G, a gp often would do isn't it you oh know? i mean gps often you know they're still getting to root causes that, right. but okay. but ultimately yeah. what i do is give it give us an overview of other things that people can do in their home and sometimes that's difficult because Often, if you're in a GP scenario, as I said, it's a time, it's a time thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's yeah. not that they don't have yeah. the same information necessarily. It's just that when I consult people, I work privately and, and I consult people for an hour and a half. There's a yeah. huge amount of difference between sitting with someone for an hour and a half or sitting with someone for 10. At the most, they might get half an hour. Right. So, you know, yes. you, the amount of yes. information and the amount of observation I get by seeing how people interact, seeing yep. about the little things that come up when, you know, husband and wife are sat in front of you, oh, yeah. you know, children, the yeah. way that they interact yeah. with their parents, there's just so yeah. much. So, yeah. yeah. That's, yes. Um, Paige says, food is pharmacy, eat yes. as nature intended. Yep. I must try that sometime. Yeah, so actually in, because um, I, I love the pharmacy, because you can actually just put pharmacy as the F-A-R-M-A-C-Y, and that's actually done a lot in America. Mm. So they actually have their own, um, they actually have their own, um, now in China, they have their own veggie gardens on top of oh, the hospitals oh. and now they're using the food from where they grow at the hospitals and actually then selling it to the cafes that lease their lease in the you know hospitals essentially and that's amazing and that's really the way that i feel that we should be going i mean mm. yeah I, I don't I, I don't like hospital food one bit and um it's terrible yeah so. it's like plastic yeah, it doesn't taste good, and yeah. that's why you see people bringing in McDonald's and KFC. You know, oh, that's what God. people do because they they don't have the yeah. it in the hospitals. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, now you've been writing a book. I have. Yes. Trying. And, and <laughs> it's a hard process if anyone's ever done it before. Um, I've written a small book, but it was only very small. I actually have. No, Did no. you? Yeah, yeah, I have. A, I released it five years ago. It's really? Called, What's seriously, it called? It's called Inspiration. It's a, book, it's a poetry, poetry Beautiful. book. Beautiful. Yeah, so, um, did and, anyone know did, that? Did, <laughs> I'll put it if you like. I'll put a link to it. But what I'm yeah. gonna, but what I'm going to do now is put a link to your book. Yeah, it's pre-orders. This, this is because this is about you, not me. So <laughs> this is a link to your book. And, oh, I think you should put yours too. Um, I can do that. <laughs> now we live, yeah. Amy. Now we live. Oh, oh. <laughs> How many times we have to reconnect? <laughs> How green is my cactus? <laughs> Unbelievably, this is our third attempt to get my super duper technology to work properly. Ah, Dan, I love Danny. Come straight back on. I love it. That is great. She is, she is a trooper. Danny, you are worth everything. I'm not paying you. You are a trooper. Um, it's I quite annoying. It. We're like, it's, oh no, it's this. Disconnected it's, again. It's very annoying to get to a part three, considering that yeah. supposedly I had this all sorted out. That technology was not going to let me down. That I wasn't. That I don't even stream through a mobile phone now. I stream through the the laptop, but the laptop's connected to a mobile Wi-Fi hotspot, which in theory should be brilliant. But look how well it's working tonight. Not at all. Okay. I believe you've got a book. And I, yes, is that where we were? Yeah, that's where we were. Let's put let's put that. No, hang on. That's not the link to the book. Let's put the link to your book, and we'll and we'll go there. Um, 
because it's yeah so the link to the um, book is actually just um oh look right. disappear i thought this was the vegan <laughs> hour not the disappearing so hour the, i know we, we it's know so why bad. It, we know why it's happening because amy's energy is so strong intense it's just amazing so um okay uh let's he was like there's going to be too many people on here yeah <laughs> It's, it's, it's just gonna blow up. Yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna, we're gonna break, break. It's gonna the go viral. This will break the internet, and it did. Um, oh look, Mitzi says hi from vegan oh, friendly Israel. Oh, oh wow! From Israel, there we I've go. I've been to Israel. It's very beautiful. Hi, and, Mitzi. And it is so. They've had the, I think, the biggest vegan activism event late last year really? in the world. Yeah, they had like five thousand or ten thousand or something people there at, at an event marching through the streets. It was wow, like incredible. That's amazing. So it is amazing. Let's see if we can make it through to the end of the broadcast yes. on part three. Yes. And for those that have just joined us again, this will be on YouTube later. In any case, they're all connected together, and <laughs> and um, so that is fantastic, Mitzi. And and Dan, now there's a conversation going on yeah. behind the scenes between Danny and Mitzi. Okay. What I've done now, Amy is editing her book, aren't you, that you've uh, written. And I have put a link to Amy's book. Now, if you're a smart person like we are, and him over there, um, you would have already pre-ordered a dozen copies of Amy's book. <laughs> I That's actually have had, I actually have had, um, so, so basically the book is called um, Be Unnumbered. And Be Unnumbered, yeah. Be Unnum Unnumbered comes from, um, be Unnumbered is my company and um, the reason it's called that because a lot of people get confused they're like why is it called Unnumbered is that um, is that ultimately for me I, I don't want to treat any patient like a number and I believe that we're all very very different and we all um, have very different biochemistry and physiology and and as I said everything's personalized so to me you know you're very unique and therefore, I believe you're unnumbered. Um, so my book is called um, Be Unnumbered, Health is More Than Medicine. And it's really just a very simple guide to the simple things that people can do for their own health to be empowered. Um, there's a section on it on nutrition, but there's also a section on it on kind of hydration, on sleep, on emotional intelligence, on nature. You know, you mentioned earlier, we talked about mm. nature. It gives mm. us so much information. Um, it talks about um, community and humanitarian work and how scientifically these things make us happier. Because as I was saying earlier, my, the three pillars that I rest on is health, happiness, and harmony. Mm. That's the way I believe that you can be truly wholeheartedly living in joy, really. Mm. And, and when you also, you've named your, your book Be Unnumbered. And I remember when the first conversation we had, yes. which I think actually you were in india at the time and we, we oh, conversed we on, online yes and you actually said to me something about labels you don't believe in lab labels on people and no. i remember thinking this girl's a nut yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then i yeah. got over that and then i started to realize well, you know your stuff <laughs> you know i don't really like you know i mean we're on the vegan hour but i, I really I, I don't like labels because i find that labels really confines people and it causes a lot of rifts between people and I, for me, veganism is an attitude and it's a way that we can educate people, but it's not a way to criticize other people. And, and there are people out there that, that are vegans that criticize people. And I think we have to be really careful of that, you know, because vegan veganism is the new is the future you know it truly is it's mm. growing every day and it's progressive in, in its outlook of what we do you know at the end of the day we've sh many many studies on reducing cancer lowering blood pressure improve you know reducing diabetes having lower um body mass index so you're thinner mm. You know, there's so much evidence on it. It's, you know, even in the World Health Organization, they talk about how eating more fruit and veg. So at the end of the day, to me, it's progressive, but it's not a it's not a way for you to act superior or to judge another. I, I, don't, I don't agree with it. It's just mm. my standpoint. In that case, I'm going to have to remove half the memes I've put on my yeah. page today. <laughs> because... <laughs> They may not have been particularly good. Um, anyway, that's a whole different thing. Yes. <laughs> so, um, when can we? Uh, when will your book? 
be released? Do you have a release date? Yeah, hopefully August. Um, okay. is, and then I'll hopefully be doing a European tour because I'm English. <laughs> and yeah, hopefully then doing a tour in October onwards going all around Australia. The plan is to literally travel all around Australia. Mm. Doing workshops, speaking events I'm already doing and mm. running retreats on top of that mm. um, to really just connect with more people and get, get in there. Wow. So now, one of the, what we said about tonight's show was that you, you're going to be talking about the uh, what was it? What we call the vegan, the advantages and, and pitfalls of vegan mm. diets. Mm. And we haven't even we, we haven't, haven't even touched on it. And, and he said it, he told me it wouldn't even last an hour. It's now we've now got 15 minutes, but we can definitely go through that okay, because so, um, because there is. I think I just brief. I did just briefly mention, and I was just saying to Harry before we came online. You know, there's some amazing. Um, statistics out there right now oh we're back there's some amazing statistics out there right now which shows that vegan diets say can can save up to 8.1 million people per year that's per year that's per year wow so this is you know it's very progressive and, and that's and, and sorry to interrupt but that's just people what about the animals it's yeah well, year, completely you know? yeah. yeah and you know, we know that it um, is a huge, huge saver for cardiovascular disease. So all your heart attacks, um, your strokes, your diabetes as well. Um, we know all of this. And, and, you know, most people on here are already converted. So you've already had some probably some great benefits from being vegan. But what I did want to talk about is some of the pitfalls because, mm. you know, again, as I said, you know, I, I don't truly believe in segregating yourself and then thinking that just because you've gone vegan, everything's all good. Because Again, it's not my observation. Um, okay. it, yeah. I still have people who come to me frequently who on paper look like they have the most amazing diet, mm. you know, mm. full of fruit and vegetables, but it usually is a lot of fruit. And you've got to remember that fruit has fructose in it, mm. which is sugar, essentially. Mm. Mm. Um, so sugar and things like that can, um, can basically bring in things like candida. So that's like thrush. So I get a lot of women that come to me because they basically eat so much fruit that they're just feeding their, their thrush. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So, you know, wow. these, these things happen. The, the sugar, though, in fruit is different to, to processed yes. sugar and white sugar. Completely. Because, because it's usually taken in a form that's including fibre and stuff like that as well. Yes, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Mitzi says my severe asthma disappeared on going vegan. Yeah. And that's I, good. And, and yeah. honestly, I suspect that, you know, you know, I was just in a conference on the weekend mm. all about, um, you know, nutritional medicine. And we, we commonly talk frequently about gluten and dairy is mm. highly allergenic. So, you know, very inflammatory for the body. And, and it's the first thing we ask people to go off. So, you ah, know, if you have issues okay. with your joints, have issues, yeah. you know, with tiredness, any, you know, different things with autoimmune conditions. If you look at the cells um, biochemically, they're usually in flames. Again, problems with skin. You go off dairy and gluten, um, you know, obviously you still need to get in your micronutrients. So you still need to get in B12. You need to get in um, your calcium, your magnesium. You need to get in good amounts of iron. And you also need to um, look at the protein because I often find that most vegan diets, in all honesty, most people don't do it right. Most people are extremely high in their carbohydrates and don't eat the best carbohydrates. So you, there's difference between simple carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates. So, you know, start eating just your sweet potato and your quinoa and try and really stay away from your simple, um, your simple carbohydrates. And the other thing is really look at your protein source. Most vegans have a very small dose of protein in their diet um, and they don't usually have a lot of essential fatty acids and fats. So, you know, just put in loads of nuts, loads of avocado, get a stock your pantry full of different types of oil. So avocado oil, macadamia oil, extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, and just Think of like a Mediterranean diet without the mm -hmm. fish, mm -hmm. but just think like greasy type food. So, so you're saying uh, that you've you're saying that oil's okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Extra virgin oils, your coconut oil, your macadamia, avocado—they all have different um, different chains of essential mm -hmm. fatty acids that are extremely important for cell structure. That's how you make cells. 
So your skin, your hair, your nails yeah. is the first thing people realize. Um, but ultimately, it's, it makes sense. What, what if you're um, a person that believes that oil is not good for you? Could yeah. you, could you? Which oils? Any of them. There's some, uh, there's some very, I'm trying to think of it, if it's um, Dr. Michael Clapper or one of the, one of the um, maybe a couple of the vegan doctors in the US yeah. um, that just straight out say no oil. So mm -hmm. what if, yeah, so. I don't know why they would say that. I, yeah, I, without sort of watching they must the have, video, they must, I'd have to. They must have a study know. on it, but yeah. in yeah. my experience, okay. uh, the thing is, is you ultimately have to look at where you're going to replace those essential fatty acids. Well, that's what I was going to ask. If you're if you're not having it, then yeah. how do you compensate? Yeah, exactly. And I suppose yeah. for me, what I've realised is I do have to take B12. I do have mm -hmm. to take vitamin D. Mm -hmm. You know, I do have to supplement my protein because I don't get enough of that in my diet, mm -hmm. and I don't want to have a carbohydrate-rich diet. I want to be more high-fat, high-protein, which is very difficult on a vegan diet. Yeah, so why? Why uh, why do you not want to have the carbohydrates in, yes. instead of have the high fats and high protein? Yeah, so again, very good evidence of intermittent fasting and very mm -hmm. good evidence of bringing yeah. you into ketosis. And uh, yeah. again, yeah. carbohydrates, yeah. the wrong carbohydrates, again, yeah. gluten, very inflammatory. Yeah. So yeah. it just depends on what type of vegan you are. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. most vegans do not eat five yeah. servings of vegetables a day. Yeah. Most don't. Yeah. Like there is definitely people out there that are fully 100% on the ball and are doing this, but they're not all like that. Now, you have to be careful. Christine uh, says high protein is bad for your liver, so. No, I don't no. believe so, no. No, no? okay. No. Um, can we expand I, on that or? I'm not quite sure, Christine, why you think high protein is bad for your liver. You're talking about someone that may have a condition with their liver or why would protein be bad for your liver if you're a normal person with normal liver function yeah. there is no issue with having protein in your diet one milligram um one gram per kilogram is is fine is sufficient okay so you you know if you're a 60 60 kilogram person then i have 60 grams of protein um, and best sources of fat that you could re recommend avocado amazing Amazing, yeah. uh, avocado, yeah. just smash it down. Yeah, good stuff. Um, Dr. Gregor. Dr. Gregor, Christine mentions Dr. Gregor, that's who talks about not having any oils. Oh, Dr. any Dr. oils. Gregor. I don't yeah. know, I'd have to so, look it up in all honesty. Yeah, Haven't so. seen it. Um, but, but I don't know the high protein with regards to the liver. Some people say high protein with kidneys. That's different. It's the way that the, the protein is um, filtrated because it's filtrated often by the kidneys. I have celiac and I'm gluten and soy vegan. Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. So you have a super strict um, diet. And Mitzi, what do you eat? Yeah, there's a good question. <laughs> because I, eat, I'm very similar um, to you. I'm not, I don't, but I'm pretty it's, much gluten. It's interesting what you said earlier too about um, most people do better when they're taken off gluten. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, yeah. bloating yeah. wise. Yes, yeah. 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 So is that because modern um, the products nowadays like for instance bread nowadays apparently is so different to what it used to be 50 or 100 years ago and it's nearly impossible to digest now is that um well reason? we never really used to have bread until the food industries came so the food right. industry bought yeah. us all this stuff yeah. before that we were eating um, the normal stuff that the farmers gave us yes we weren't yeah. we weren't yes. doing you know um, we weren't having packaged fortified foods what, eat a lot of quinoas and lentil, nuts and seeds. What Perfect. Lin, what Linny is saying is most of the leading ve vegan doctors believe that your endo... Thelia cells are damaged by eating oils and oils are a refined product that was, was never, never uh, something. Never something, yes. Um, so, yeah, there is a, we've, got, we've got a debate. Yeah. We've got Hon a debate. <laughs> Honestly, Lindy, I'd have to look into it, but that's not my experience. And I would really want to know where you're replacing your essential fatty acids. So you need essential fatty acids. Yeah, they're yeah. so the word yeah. essential <laughs> means you need them. <laughs> yeah. So 
<laughs> I would really wonder where you're getting them from. Well, oh, oh. And I love that Mitzi says um, vegan dark chocolate. Remember, like cacao is amazing, yeah. Yeah. amazing for um, your health. It's got lots and lots of micronutrients in so, it. So Mitzi's having nuts, seeds, quinoa, lentil. That's all things yeah, that I have. Bean, bean shoots. But what um, I really want to see is people eating a lot of the cr um, cruciferous vegetables. So yeah, you need yeah. to be eating your yeah. broccoli, your cauliflower, yeah. you yeah. know, the things that look like brains. They oh, actually yes. are brain food. Yes. They're amazing. Yes. Yeah. Um, Flaxseed for omega three. Yep. For, yeah. Flaxseed, um, brown algae. Chia seeds. They're, Chia seeds good. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, I have them every day. Um, come on, reconnect. Thank you. It keeps <laughs> dropping in and out. I don't know. It's um, Lindy said oil is a refined product that was never meant to be ingested in the concentrated form that we have evolved with modern cooking. Mm. So uh, I'd have to have a debate on that at some yeah. point. I think we should get a boxing ring. <laughs> no, I'm not like that, honestly, Lindy. <laughs> no, um, well, that's honestly, something that can be... yeah, we can look into that. But yeah. again, what, Lindy, what are you replacing for essential fatty acids? Well, that's a good question because that's, yeah. I, I don't know. You've got to also, you know, at the end of the day, we're already on um, a, a more restricted diet than the average Joe, and you've got to look at where are you going to get your other micronutrients from, and you know where do you have some leverage at the end of the day. I don't. I think sometimes if you're if I'm talking to people that are going or heading into vegan, you don't want to restrict people from get go. It's very very difficult to mm. just you know go from eating meat to yeah. then vegan. Yeah. So you know, yeah. really, all I say is just. Think about eating lots of vegetables a day. Think about having your um, nuts and your seeds and yeah. think about having your avocado and then look at what protein sources you can, you know, get. Yep. And, and you have to look at your things like your vitamin D. You have to look at your B12. It's not as simple as saying you think that you get it all from your nutrients. You know, we know no. that, again, there's lots of studies on soil that's deplete in nutrients. Yes. It's, it's yes. not as simple as that. Yep. So um, you can get it tested. Yes, and and that's something that uh, somebody can do through you, or, or they do the testing through. No, uh, they can do it through, through yourself. I mean, they can yeah. get testing through any integrative doctor. They'll they'll do testing. But yes, that's what I do. I find that a lot of vegans come to me through social media channels, and then they say, "Oh, I'd love to get my you know vitamin D and my B12 checked and things like this." And these are simple tests to get done. So yeah, you should get it done. Don't just take a supplement. Um, that isn't the appropriate way to look at your health. You know, quantify it. Look at science and, and say, okay, is your vitamin D low? And then replace it. Look at your vitamin B12, replace it. That, that's the way I work. I do conventional and I look at nutrition. And I still have a science background. I love that, that Mitzi is throwing in all these different foods. <laughs> it keeps throwing in more foods, cabbage, lettuce, parsley. Throw. Christine asks, do you follow any vegan doctors? I haven't been, but I don't, in all yeah. honesty, I try to not get on Wi-Fi as much as most people uh, yes, because, yeah. um, again, lots of electromagnetic field mm. um, issues, which again is another topic on itself. Mm. Um, mm. I find it very, very difficult in my life to mm. scroll and look at other, mm. other doctors and I don't really want to compare, but I should educate myself on what they're talking about, and but no, I don't. Lindy says all fruit and veggies have protein, which is true. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Um, Cabbage, lettuce, parsley, thyme. Yep, definitely. So, yes. Mitzi's, Mitzi's got it down. Mitzi has She's got it down. Got Pumpkin, awesome. carrots, yams, it's all good. Flaxseed, yeah. Good. It's all good stuff there. Wow. Yep. It's better than the um, the vegan burgers I eat all the time and yeah. pizza and <laughs> chips. And, and that's the thing, you know, at the end Oops. of the day, yeah. this is, you know, I, what I'm trying to say to you is most of you are converted to vegans, right? Mm. And what I'm trying to say is that. It's, it doesn't come with it just complete that the, have, being vegan is easy. It can be difficult and there are some pitfalls and I find that, again, people can get quite um, protective over, just because I think there's pitfalls doesn't mean that I don't think it's a great diet and, you know, ultimately that's what I'm doing anyway. So I, I believe in veganism, but there are things that I notice as a doctor, as a professional that does come through my door. So if you haven't got those things tested, then, you know, Prove yourself right, like get it tested, and then no. Um, now, Mitzi also says, 
uh, she doesn't smoke or mm. drink alcohol, which is fantastic. Yeah, perfect. And Lindy says, having just returned from the holistic cruise, yeah, there was the vegan cruise overseas that a yep. few of my friends have been on, where the world's most well-known vegan doctors and most maintain that oils damage your endo endothelial cells. cells like, I'd have to see the way. studies. So, I don't, yeah. I don't know yeah. that. But there so. is an interesting. Um, there is an interesting point that you brought up there is, is how they how if you're not having oil, what are you replacing your essential? Yeah, what are they? Uh, what are, Lindy? What are they replacing essential fatty acids yeah, with? Essential fatty acids um, with. So. You know, there's all there's there's a constant. <laughs> nothing is black and white in medicine. Okay, nothing. It's always a gray area. So you have to look at what you the benefit is by taking that away, and then what is the you know the risks of not having it or the risks of having it. So it's always this constant balance. I don't believe there's a quick right and wrong. Because actually, interestingly, um, as much as I agree with um, not having oil, yep. um, from an Ayurvedic perspective, mm. they actually say oils are essential as well. Yeah, they've been doing it for thousands of years and say that you actually have to have it. Mm. Um, and I was told the reason why during a consultation, but I can't remember what it is now. Mm. But but yes, they said you you had to have it, but not necessarily. Yeah. Maybe not necessarily cooking in it. Maybe um, putting uh, oil just on on your salad or something. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than and, and that's the up, thing. Like you know. Lindy, you could get your essential fatty acids tested functionally, and then you you know then you have an answer to whether you actually have enough essential fatty acids. That's and if the you point, don't. Yes then what is it that you want to replace them with? So is there, well, what could you replace them with? Is there any suggestions, anything you can think of? Well, yeah, I mean, most essential fatty acids do come from fish. Um, oh, so right, that's okay. the issue. Yeah. So okay. um, yeah. You, it's um, mainly, your, it's going to mainly be your oils. It is in some um, nuts and things like that. Ultimately, you've got to think fats, mm. your avocados and things mm. still have them. But you, you've got to look at where you're going to be able to replace it if you're going to take something out. Which is why I said if you take meat out, you have to start looking at things like B12. You can't, you've yeah. got to remember that B12 comes from an animal source. So you have, well, to, you have to start looking at these things. It's artificially coming through an animal source, yes. is it? Yes. 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 Okay, yeah. Because its origin is actually in the soil. Yes. It but is. it's artificially, yeah, yeah, coming through there. So um, John says refined oils are bad. Yes. Avocado, nuts, almonds, etc., are good. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Let's go with that. <laughs> Let's try and reach some consensus of agreement here as we get to the end of the hour of the TBH hour. We can see smiles from all the audience members over there going, even if you listen carefully, you hear them going, yay, yay. See, I'm, I'm a ventriloquist. Because <laughs> they're happy that the three attempts have finally worked. No, three. So, I reckon three we're a record. Uh, um, no, it has happened once before oh. with someone else that was How high, many times? high energy. Oh, okay. so, but usually it doesn't. Last week was perfect, so I don't, and I don't know. Anyway, it was wonderful to have you on the show. Oh, isn't it last time you made me hug a particular way? Yes, you've got to hug to the right. Oh, I've got to hug to the right. Yes. So we've got to hug this way. No, to, to my, I go to my right, you go to your right. You so see, you have to go this way. Oh, well, you're saying see? it's hard. Everyone so observing this lesson, this is... <laughs> You're saying it's heart, heart to heart. Heart to heart, yeah, and it's the so it's the positive energy is closer, and the negative energy is. I always get, I can't remember if it's the liver or the kidneys that, that's your negative. Um, what's the one that detoxes? Is your it, liver. Okay, so it's liver further apart. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which so is when you go the, that way, yes. your livers are further apart, yes. your hearts are closer. Oh. So there you go. See, so there you get it. That's Harry's energetic top tip. medicine from Harry. It's, <laughs> Harry's top tip. You can Google it, guys. I don't make this stuff up. I Google it. Anyway, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thank, Thank you for you. coming on. Um, and uh, guys, if you've got any questions for Dr. Amy, I've provided the links in one of the three versions of this show to um, her book and to her website. And uh, the YouTube version, of course, will be on uh, probably by tomorrow night. Thank you for everyone who persisted through the technical difficulties tonight. And in two weeks' time, we're back, hopefully without technical difficulties. <laughs> uh, and that will be on Tuesday, March the 20th, with That Vegan Couple. They're actually called Ooh. That Vegan Couple, Natasha and Luca. They're very, very well known. Uh, they've got a huge following around the world. So That Vegan Couple. And I can see the hearts coming up because people know who I'm talking about. Oh. So thank you, everyone, for joining. Live vegan and save lives. And thank you once again, can't, Amy, for, I can't do it. For, for, for all your wisdom. And uh, I'll speak to you guys soon. And good night. Bye.